The Nexus 7 is one of the best value tablets that you're going to find. It's affordable, it's relatively fast with a 1.2 GHz quad-core Tegra 3 processor, but there are just some areas where it could be quicker, web browsing with the Chrome browser in particular. So how does one go about making their device faster? Well, for one developer, it was releasing what's called the Elite Kernel. It replaces your stock kernel, and it's like running your Nexus 7 on afterburners. So like I mentioned, this is my Nexus 7. It's the 8 gig variety, which just means that it's got half the onboard storage as the 16 gig variety, but everything is pretty much the same. Let's go ahead and check about tablet. And you can see I'm running Android version 4.11 and my kernel is 3.1.10 dash Motley plus blah, 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 a whole bunch of other stuff. This is where all of the magic happens. Okay, now what do I mean by that? First of all, I'm running the stock ROM. It's the ROM that came with the phone. I have un OEM unlocked it, which means it completely is wiped, brand new. Uh, that'll happen anytime you OEM unlock. After that, I had to root it. After I rooted it, then of course I put on my recovery image, and once that was done, I was able to flash this custom kernel. So there was a little bit of homework and legwork involved there, not too terribly difficult because this is a Nexus device. But let's go ahead and take a look. We can run Set CPU. This is an app that's available free in the, uh, the Play Store. And you can see over here, my minimum speed is set at 51 megahertz, which is really, really slow. And my maximum over here is 1800 megahertz or 1.8 gigahertz. Some people say with their Nexus that this is a little bit unstable. For my Nexus, it's a little bit unstable. When that's the case, you just simply move this over to 1700. People have had a lot more success with it. We'll see if we can get by with 1800 without too many problems. Now, if you notice over here, I'm also running the interactive governor versus the performance governor. We can go ahead and change that to However we want performance, of course, gets you a little bit more speed. Once we have that, and there's lots of other things you can do in here with voltage and the governors and whatnot. I'm just gonna be very basic. We're gonna set this at 1800 minimum, 1800 maximum. Everyday use, I don't recommend you do this. You might wanna come over here and do something else like, uh, I don't know, somewhere around 300 or 400 megahertz as the low and 1600 or 1.6 gigahertz is the max. But for this video, let's go all out with just basics, changing the performance up and changing things to 1800, both high and low. Once that is done, we're set, we're good. Let's go ahead and run a uh, benchmark here. We're just gonna fire up Quadrant because it's got a lot of stuff that it does, not because it's necessarily the best benchmark on the market, but it's probably one of the prettiest, at least in my opinion. So we're gonna go ahead and run this through. First of all, you're gonna notice how much quicker this runs than just regular, normal, everyday, uh, when you're running it through with a stock kernel. Quite a bit faster. In fact, this is one of the fastest times that I've seen Quadrant run through and complete. What I want to show you, if we watch down here, is our frames per second. 104, 107, 89, 110. We're getting into the hundreds of frames per second on this benchmark, and it's just amazing. There are no graphic anomalies. There's no... Uh, no hiccups, no hesitations. Over here, we've seen in some other devices, we'll have some anomalies when the planets kind of cross each other. Nothing here. It's perfectly clean. This DNA molecule, it's usually a little bit slower and not quite as high res. 93 frames per second. It's amazingly fast. And looking at it, I'm not even getting what the other people are reporting because I'm not tweaking the voltages and whatnot. I'm getting 5,446. Now that's significant. This machine, the same thing without this kernel, benches about 3,500. So not quite twice as fast, but a good bit faster. Let's go ahead and fire up the, uh, the web browser over here. Now the web browser that comes stock, of course, is called Chrome. It's not the browser browser. And the first thing to look at is just how fast everything loads in and how smooth the scrolling is. This is where other people have said, hey, there's some slowdowns, there's some issues. But overall, I mean, this 
it's smooth, it's fluid. I haven't noticed the same lagginess, the same jumpiness, the same hesitations that you get when you're just using the stock kernel. It's amazing. Now I could get in and run some games and show you that. Unfortunately, running at this speed, I ran into some compatibility issues and whatnot. And to my eye, there wasn't a lot of difference between running this at full blown afterburner speed versus running it on the normal stock. I couldn't see any difference, though the gameplay felt a little bit smoother. Now, drawbacks. This device, out of the box, is going to give you between 8 and 10 hours of active run time. That's 8 hours of watching an HD video, 720p, or up to you know 10, maybe even more hours, doing normal everyday activity with Wi-Fi on, with Gmail going out and getting stuff. So real, normal, everyday activities. And then 300 hours of standby time. Running this, of course, at the full-blown speed that I uh, just mentioned to you before, 1800 by 1800, you're running at full speed all the time. Don't do that in, in everyday life, okay? It's just gonna burn out your battery very fast. And it, it'll rip right through it, it's amazing. In fact, you can see here I'm pegged out at 1800, and let's come back down to, let's say, one, you know, let, let's say just below the stock, so 1100. Stock, of course, is 1200. It will scale up and down accordingly. It takes a little bit of time to do that, and setting your governor to interactive helps a little bit better as well. Now, if I flip back and forth here, it still looks buttery smooth, but it's a little smoother. It's a little nicer. I don't have a lot of apps installed on this ROM, but you can see it's very fast, it's very fluid, it's very nice, even when switching over to the widgets, very fluid, very fast. It's what this device should be. And then we get to another downside. Right back here on the back of the device, it gets really, really hot, ridiculously hot. Don't run this thing at 1800, 1600, 1700 maybe, but it's gonna get really hot and it's gonna get, <laughs> things don't end well when devices get that hot. Luckily, I didn't have any problem with that. Something else that you want to consider. You've got two speakers, one over here, one over here. When you're running at 1800, eventually you are going to get weird pops and sounds out of this all the time. Not just when you're playing audio, all the time. Bump it down to 1700, they usually go away. So that means you're not actually burning out your speakers, we hope not, but it may be you know, running the extra voltage or running the extra extra speed through the circuit paths that are around wherever the speaker paths start, you know, somewhere up in here, it introduces some, some extra static. So it's not quite shield enough to, to take you all the way up to the full speed. But, you know, hey, it's, it's speed, it's fast, and that's what we're after here, right? This is all about speed. Absolutely amazing. If you want to do this, if you want to get extra speed, I definitely recommend this kernel. Again, with the few little things that we've mentioned, keep it around 1700. You are gonna have some slower or some shorter battery lives because you've got the faster speeds running. A few other things that this kernel does, head over to the article at pocketnow.com. There are some other fancy things that you might like, such as lowering the, uh, how dark the backlight can get. So if you're reading at night, you have an even darker backlight very, very nice for reading. Awesome. I love it. You probably will too. There's a whole bunch of other technical stuff that this kernel does. The article at pocketnow.com will outline all of that. If you've got questions or comments, want to know more about it, get the link to where to download this kernel. Head over to pocketnow.com. We'll have a link right down here at the bottom of the YouTube video. If you're reading this on pocketnow.com, of course, you're already there. If you like seeing this kind of stuff, how fast we can make our tablets go and you know maybe even burn them out in the process make sure you give the video a big thumbs up for pocket now showing off afterburners on the nexus 7 i'm joe levi